Doing all the things that you and I do and at night standing in prayer for four or five hours at a time and in the day fighting the battles discharging the armies giving the ahkam and the rulings explaining the Quran instructing the people in behavior how could a man do all of that and stand four or five hours at night at one time what kind of human being could that be? And let me tell you, after Christopher Columbus came back and claimed that land for King Ferdinand and Isabella, they sent more ships. And within 150 years, they destabilized massacred, killed, liquidated, eliminated 89 million native Indians, as they called them, to take control of what they call the new world. So we got 56 and we got 89. You keep adding for me, please. How many? 487 million. That's half a billion people. They never defined any of these actions, any of these barbaric, tragic intrusions, criminal occupations, destabilizations, murder, and protracted crimes on humanity. They never called it what? Terrorism. <laughs> It's unbelievable how a concept could be forced on the world with their eyes wide open and all the lives, all the time that people go to church, read the Bible, talk to their priests, their leaders, themselves, around the dinner table, pray to God with their eyes open or closed and don't understand the Trinity and they accept it that it's simply a mystery that cannot be explained. The Islamic position regarding that is that generally, generally, the role of men is to protect. Generally. To represent, to protect outwardly. Just like you have never in history heard of an army, uh, I mean a country, going to war against another country and they sent a female regiment. It has never happened. And there's a reason for that. With all the liberation that's gone on, America didn't send no female regiment. Because generally speaking, answering the lady's question, they are equal in front of God, but they are not the same. You see, if a little rat ran across here right now, what would you do? If it was a man, <laughs> it's right, right or wrong. And they just got finished praying the morning prayer. So they start planning this bank robbery. <laughs> or they call up the lady, or the lady call up the man. They want to meet together. So I said, where should we meet? Oh, well, let's meet after lunch. Well, lunch time is door time now, prayer time. <laughs> so but she said, well, before we go have this, this little meeting that we're going to have, let's pray door first. Pray door. <laughs> so, okay, we pray. So then we had a meeting together. So where are we going from here? Well, we should go to your house and my house. Well, we got to pray, pray that afternoon prayer now. <laughs> so we pray the afternoon prayer. So where are we going? We'll meet at your house. So we, what we're going to do, we take a little drink and we start getting smooching or whatever. So, oh, well, it's, a, it's a sunset prayer. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. So the whole issue of the prayer, the Prophet, the, the Quran says, Inna salata tanha an fahsha wal munkar. Is this correct? Verily the prayer is a preventive deterrent against human tendencies towards doing what's wrong.
And one day she wake up and she puts on niqab and she puts her full clothes on no more lipstick no more perfume she doesn't talk to the men she's not working anymore because she understands to keep her higher to keep herself she stays home and take care of her home and her husband says what's happened to you She says, yesterday I read an ayah in the Quran. I read the hadith from the Prophet وسلم, and it made me cry and to think about my religion and I'm not doing that no more. And so he said, then I don't want you. You have become extreme. So she have now become stranger. Alhamdulillah. If he leave her, we ask Allah to give her another stranger. The Muslim neighbor, the Muslim co-worker, the Muslim colleague, they are the ones that are blocking the way for people understanding Islam because people are getting confused. They are confusing Muslims with Islam. And part of us uncovering the treasure sometimes means moving Muslims out of the way. Now that the, the treasure is open and plain and clear and uncovered for anyone to see, I ask, are there any non-Muslims here tonight that would like to inherit this treasure? La ilaha Illallah. Thank you.